Okay, so this light we're looking at here, the size of the output here, can we change that? Does this have the ability to get wider or more narrow? Yeah, we absolutely can. There's sort of two different ways to do that we're gonna talk about this time. The first is zoom. And I'll say, I think zoom is probably the most underutilized feature of a, of a lot of moving lights. Um, you know, if I'm shining lights out in the crowd, I always zoom them out nice and wide so we're not being you know, uh, too annoying with the, 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 the uh, beam of light in people's eyes. A lot of times too, even in a, in a smaller rig where maybe I don't have as many profile fixtures as I want, I will zoom them out to just fill more of the air with the pattern of the light to do that. And you can also do the inverse. You can zoom them down very tight and get that super tight shaft of light effect that has become popular in the past you know, five to 10 years with, with a lot of fi uh, fixtures. Um, we're gonna look at zoom here real quick and start out wide. We were about in the middle of the, the fixture zoom range. Now this, this is full wide. So, and we're only shooting about 15 feet. You can imagine in a nice big space how big this is gonna get over the, a period of time. In fact, that's probably one of my favorite fit, fi uh, features about this particular light is the ability to get this really nice wide zoom. Or we could zoom the other direction and go super narrow. And watch the brightness of the light as we do this. Did you see how the lights seem intense. to get brighter? Yeah. That's because what we're doing is changing the, the optics where we are taking all that light and focusing it down into a tight area, or we are spreading out over a wider area. This is similar to like with ellipsoidals where we change the lens out on the front. Similar science behind it where, you know, what we're doing is either taking the light and concentrating it where it can go a long distance and maintain its intensity, or we're taking that light and spreading it out and covering a wide area but we're doing it with the same amount of light so that light gets spread out over that area. Okay. Um, the next part we're gonna talk about is iris and kind of help us out with that. I think we're gonna put a gobo in. So we've talked about gobos before, you can see that. I mentioned how with zoom, it spreads things out. Iris is a little different. So take a look at this. Notice how you actually start to see the outer edge of it cut in. Yeah. That's iris. So iris is literally taking a mechanical iris like you'd have in your camera and just starting to dial that in smaller. So the, the two are not equal. The, you know, a lot of people think use, use either one in the wrong situation or think it's a similar thing. Um, you know, iris, I use most commonly when I need to maintain intensity, but change the, the size of the light. Um, zoom is, you know, I either want a super tight, narrow beam uh, that's very bright, or I want a wide beam that is, you know, spread out as wide as I can get it. So this would be really handy in church. Oh yeah, use this all the time. Okay, uh, so how would you apply both zoom and iris at the same time? Well, let's look at that real quick. So we're gonna take the gobo out, we're gonna zoom out completely wide. So what we've done here is, um, obviously zoom the light out wide, there's no iris in at this moment, no, no gobo in it. If I wanted to maintain the same intensity, but change the, the overall size of the sphere of light, I'd use an iris along with the zoom here. So we're not gonna change the zoom at all, we're gonna start putting an iris on top of that. So the light is still zoomed exactly the way, same way it was. And if you notice the intensity level of it didn't change the way it did when we were doing just zoom. So is another way to do that zoom and then just take the intensity down? You could do it that way. Um, but sometimes it's still hard to get that exactly where you want it. You know, a good example would be if I'm using this as front light, I don't want to have the, the intensity change because I've usually, I probably set that with my cameras. So I need that to stay uh. the same. But if I do, if I'm covering a wider area and I do need to, uh, you know, zoom or iris, maybe just a better used term is narrow down to a specific thing to highlight it, but I want to maintain that same intensity. This is just a, a much easier way than having to go, you know, get my light meter on stage, figure out what the intensity of the light is, and then re-verify it to make sure I didn't accidentally change it as I was adjusting intensity and zoom. Perfect.